been visiting the jungles of India or are you planning a visit to one? Well, I am going to introduce you to the underrated stars of the jungle, the trees. Hi guys, I'm Shashank Billa, a naturalist and photojournalist and I am continuing this exercise of getting to know the trees in our favourite tiger reserves that we all like to visit on safari. As always, I am going to need the help of a few companions to help me navigate the journey, the world wide web, the lovely digital photo library found on the website Flowers of India as well as this field guide right here. Jungle Trees of Central India by Pradeep Krishan, a tremendous field guide for all tree spotters. As always, do tell me how you like this video. Do of course drop in your comments as well with any questions or any particular clarifications. And of course, if you are enjoying these series of videos that we are putting together, please do hit that subscribe button. Right, let's get to it. So now that we covered a few of the trees that are found in the Pench Tiger Reserve in some of our previous episodes, we are now going to move on to another different tiger reserve, a particular favorite of mine, the Kanha Tiger Reserve. So let's get introduced to Kanha. Now Kanha spread out over 2000 square kilometers yet again a very large tiger reserve is actually located in the Satpura Michael landscape. Now the Michael is actually the Michael Hills which are the easternmost part of the Satpura mountain range and with a different landscape the forest type changes. Once again, the forest type is actually dictated by the availability of water and since in this part of Madhya Pradesh, the rainfall tends to be a little higher, this leads to a different type of forest, a moist deciduous forest. And that too is actually broken down into two parts. One is a mixed forest where you will see a diversity of species including the ubiquitous bamboo as well as a moist deciduous sal forest. That's right, that's our first tree of the day, sal or shoria robusta. Now a confession straight up first, I just love being out on a safari drive in a sal forest and it's really difficult to explain in words what makes it so special but I think a few of those things would be related to how grand this tree looks because it does grow very tall uh, in excess of probably around 20 to 25 meters in central India. In fact at the base of the Himalaya it can actually grow even much taller around 45 meters or so. So the grand appearance of this tree is definitely a major factor. Apart from that as well, sal actually has very few associate species that are able to thrive along with it. It is a resource intensive tree. So pretty much where you actually see sal, you may often see pure stands of just the sal trees. And imagine that these tall trees looking as if it's a grand cathedral that you're entering through. There is also so much symbolism with this tree. For example, the tree's name actually comes sal from shal and that means house in sanskrit basically because the timber of this tree was used for making houses additionally it is the state tree of chhattisgarh and jharkhand you just can't stop being in awe of this tree can you but once you've enjoyed the view of that grand canopy let's take a closer look at this particular tree using the same four characters we do every time the leaf the flowers the bark and the fruit now the leaves are actually an important character on this tree because sal is actually what we can say is an almost evergreen tree <laughs> because in many parts of India sal is actually evergreen you'll always see it in green leaves but sal actually does shed its leaves as well and in central India you may see this phenomena so the leaves usually are dark green broad oval shaped with a pointy tip you'll also notice that there are veins on the leaf as well which are parallel to each other basically and the leaves are shed usually if they are being shed here in India central India they will be shed somewhere around February March and pretty much in April or May the new leaf would sprout so again you'll see this tree leafless very very rarely the bark of this tree is usually grayish or ruddy brown uh, and as the tree gets older you'll notice these vertical lines on the trunk of the tree as well which are known as fissures so that's something that you can check out when you look at the bark of the sal uh, the flowers are these creamy white flowers actually hanging in these bunches uh, loose clusters uh, and Pradeep Krishan actually has a very nice analogy for these 
these flowers he refers to them as drops of milk which are frozen that's because the petals are actually twisted so yeah you'll actually see as if you know it's a splash of milk which is actually frozen so that's a wonderful uh, way to actually remember these flowers additionally the flowers also uh, come out during the month of march or april uh, and then after that is when the fruit comes in basically during the june or july period and the fruit tends to be in a winged shape uh, so it's an oval shape which is about a, a roughly a brown color uh, and usually it's just one single seed that actually pops out of this tree now sal actually has a lot of connections with our culture and perhaps the first thing that you will actually come to know about sal when you are actually visiting on a safari is that people will tell you they are responsible for the railway network in our country so that's right railway sleepers that are actually put on all of those tracks all across our country millions and millions of cubic feet that's all thanks to sal so that's all sal wood that you actually see additionally uh, the seed oil uh, that is also derived from this particular tree the butter is also used for cooking and is also a substitute for cocoa butter that's right it's also used in the manufacture of chocolate though the butter itself or the oil itself does require a fair bit of processing to actually be used as a substitute for cocoa butter due to the size of the leaves as well they also tend to be used as leaf plates or bowls in many rural parts of india as well uh, but other than that the timber that is actually extracted from this tree uh, actually tends to be a little difficult to season and then use in a variety of different applications it tends to be a little rigid uh, and that is why usually more of the uh, timber uses are usually for making frames etc now though i love being in sal forest unfortunately sal is on the decline more or less through most of india but particularly in central india and the reason of course might be you might have heard for many many common reasons habitat loss deforestation but another major reason this tree has lost a lot of ground is due to an infestation by an insect called the sal borer beetle now the life cycle of this insect goes something like this uh, the beetle or the adult form actually gets attracted by the scent of that resin the sap that oozes out of the tree and when they mate they then lay the eggs on on the sal tree basically and then the larvae actually burrow inside the tree and unfortunately what happens is uh, usually the sal is able to actually withstand the attacks up to a certain extent but as the infestation gets worse as it spreads to more and more trees and the larvae actually continue to grow they then bore straight into the heartwood of the tree and unfortunately over a large period of time you can have a huge die off of all of these trees now sal borer beetles of course have been around for very very long and of course the forest does continue to survive these onslaughts but in some years the attack is particularly bad and is classified as an epidemic in fact we've had one such epidemic just as recently as 2015 and that is why a large proportion of sal forests have also been lost due to this particular attack but there is hope uh, there are new methods now being introduced where you can actually continue to save the tree and you don't have to cut off a very large proportion of trees to stop the infection there are other ways you can now conserve the tree as well while ensuring that the infection doesn't spread too widely right so let's head to our next tree now you'll recall i mentioned that sal usually has a few associates that you may actually see other species around that tree but this next species that we are actually talking about isn't usually found in its vicinity in fact you will see it in other landscapes of kana including the at the edge of the grasslands as well as in the mixed forests that we actually discussed and that tree that we are discussing right now is bombax saiba or the red silk cotton tree or semal now bombax saiba or semal actually uh, is not just restricted to moist deciduous or uh, forest it is also found in other types of forest as well but this particular tree actually does quite well in moist conditions in fact in alluvial soil is where it actually prefers and grows to its maximum growth and when the tree is actually young uh, it actually has those spikes that i'm sure you've actually seen on its trunk uh, but when this tree grows older those spikes or those prickles fall away uh, and then the buttresses or you know the trunk or the base of the tree tends to get quite thick so let's get introduced to a few characters of this tree for example the leaf structure which is like this right so this particular shape when you are actually talking about leaves is called digitate 
because of course these are our digits and the leaves are also shaped like the fingers on a hand and that's what you also see on this leaf uh, and the leaflet or the center one that you usually see is the further, furthest away from the leaf stalk and also tends to be the longest again all of them are usually with pointy tips uh, the bark of this particular tree I mentioned a little while earlier it actually has those spikes when it when they are actually young this is presumably for the trees protection uh, from heavy browsing uh, so that's one thing that you'll notice about the bark of the tree but usually uh, as the tree gets older these uh, spikes tend to fall off and in fact you'll see fissures similar to the sal that we actually talked about vertical lines now let's come to the more recognizable parts of this tree and one of course is those beautiful flowers bright red usually on most occasion coral red but they may also be yellow orange uh, and even sometimes pale white so uh, that's something that you'll also notice for this particular tree uh, the flowers are very very prominent in fact they come out before the leaf so that's when you'll actually see the flowers are actually coming out during the months of January to March and at this time if you're on safari or you're on a walk and you see a bombax cyber just wait there because it is a bird watching delight for you to be near a samal uh, because you'll see a diversity of birds there you'll see bulbuls and sunbirds and flower pickers and barbets and leaf birds it's amazing to see the level of activity on this tree because they all come to feed on the nectar of those flowers and in the process of that some of them even help in pollination uh, apart from that as well though the flowers are also pollinated by bats as well so there's pollination happening during the night as well uh, and usually uh, somewhere in the months uh, somewhere between the months of March or April you'll also see the fruit actually coming out and it's this usually pouched sort of fruit pouch shape uh, with these vertical lines and here's the most recognizable part it's when the fruit opens you'll actually see the reason for the name of this tree the silk or the cotton inside the silk cotton is what uh, of course gives this tree its name and then you can see this white fiber inside of course with the black seeds also inside uh, and this particular silk cotton of course has uh, some applications as well it has been used um, to fill pillows etc as well uh, apart from that though it's a little short for it to be weaved or spun so it's usually not used for that uh, but the tree also has medicinal uh, uses as well it is used in the curing of diarrhea uh, other ailments as well uh, and it is also supposed to have some efficacy in treating infertility or impotency particularly the root of this tree however this does not this does need to be scientifically validated uh, apart from that as well uh, this particular tree tree um, uh, the wood tends to be used sometimes in uh, making uh, material for canoes etc uh, so it does fairly well in water as well apart from that though the timber is pretty light so uh, there's not much use for it for making houses or furniture it tends to be used as most for uh, matchboxes or matchsticks or any other light application right so that's a few of the tree species that you're likely to find in the Kanha Tiger Reserve keep an eye out for them if you are actually heading there on safari and uh, Apart from that as well, in case you had any other observations, any questions or even corrections, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video and want to support us, please do subscribe to our channel. Take care guys.